Hi, this is Chris from Felt Pals, and today we're going to be making a woolly owl. Now, if you're watching this video, you probably bought my supply kit, so I'll go through that. If you didn't, feel free to just follow along. Um, the kit came with a wire. It's a 20 gauge floral wire, a length of brown roving, long length of core roving, this beautiful raw fleece. I've washed it and rinsed it really well. It's barely soft. If you can see, it's got these beautiful golden tips, and that's what's going to give it our owl the feathery look. You can see the tips down here in the owl. Um, and a couple colors, black and yellow for the eyes. Okay, and before we get started, I'm just going to pull off a little bit of the brown wool, a couple of inches, and put it over there with my eye color. And I'm going to pull off just a little bit of white. Then I'm going to divide my core into three foot long sections. And my brown roving, I'm going to split up the middle lengthwise. Now we're all prepared to go. If you got my accessory kit, it's basically just a, a pad. I used a sponge and a couple needles stuck into the side of it. Some other things you might need are a multi-needle tool if you have that, um, pencil, water, and pliers if you want butt pliers. I'm going to turn this down so you can see what I'm doing and we can get started. Okay, we're going to start with the wire just by simply folding it in half and then about three inches from the fold, we're going to give it a bend. These are going to be the legs. Turn it around so you have a loop and about an inch is hanging out the back. I'm going to do that with the other leg too. I know these look like some ginormous feet, but can't build a big house on a small foundation. Okay, so we're just going to push that middle part in to make a couple toes on that side and this side. And squeeze those toes closed. This is where you could use the pliers if you want to. So this is our basic armature for the owl. Very simple, very easy. And now we're going to start wrapping. So you take one of those long lengths and I think I gave you way too much wool. I don't think you're going to need all this, but you're going to wrap it and you're going to wrap it tightly along the length of the leg right down to where the foot starts. And then you can start wrapping one of the toes Again, keeping it nice and tight. I'm going to draft this out a little bit. And go on to the other toe. Wrapping tightly is a really good skill to have in felting. It's one of the things that I find the hardest to do. And cover that back toe. I'm going to break off the rest so you can just keep that aside. And then what I'm going to do is just needle where I stopped, where I broke off the roving. You notice how I'm going in at a 45 degree angle. The wire is in there, so if I went straight in, I'd likely to break my needle. So I want to go in at a 45 degree angle and tighten up the wool on that toe and then the front toes. And then I will be back. I'm going to do the other leg and then we'll continue. Okay, you can see I have my feet done. And now we're going to start forming the body around it. So we take one of the sections of core wool. And what I like to do is start it right in between his legs like a like a big bird diaper or something. And if you needle right here a couple of times, it tends to stay well. And then I'm going to hold it where the fold in the wire is. I'm going to go through one leg, 
wrap it around through the other leg. So that was like a figure eight. And then I'm just going to secure it around and around. And I'm going to felt it down tight. This is where you could use your multi-needle tool if you have it. You don't need a multi-needle tool. You can just stab a whole lot more times with a single needle. I'm going to firm this up, making sure that I get in between his legs. And I want you to remember that felting is a lot like, I, I liken it to playing with clay. If you had a ball of clay and you kept pushing down on it like this, it would flatten out and pretty soon you'd have a flat piece of clay. But if you want to keep it round, you have to push it in all directions. I'm doing the same thing with my felting needle. I'm moving around it and pushing it where I want it to go. Now see how it's crawling down the legs there? I don't really want that. So I'm going to push it up where I want it. And it's really important to felt this base really well because it's the foundation for the rest of your sculpture. So I'm going to be poking for a little bit and I will be right back. Okay, I've got him pretty much firmed up. You can tell he has a little bit of a squish too. If I squeeze hard, I can make him move, but the fiber is not going to go anywhere. So now what we're going to do is we're going to build his body up a little bit. I'm going to do that by taking one of my lengths of core, separating it into three lengths, about four inches a piece, and stacking them. This is making it a lot thicker. So what I'm going to do is attach it to his belly, then bring it around, and this extra is going to become his tail. So I'm going to attach it really good down here on his tummy. And again here at the other side. I'm going to bring it up over the top of him and felt this in good. Down around his back. See how I'm keeping the needle going in at a 45 de or 90 degree angle. So when I'm this side, I'm going this direction and the degree stays the same as I move all around. I'm going to go down about mid back. Gonna make sure the sides are attached really good. Okay, then this part here, this fluffy part is going to be his tail. I'll lay it on my sponge and we'll do a little bit of flat felting. What I'm trying to do is make it into a nice thick piece of fabric. going to create a seam to fold against. So I'm making a line in a triangular shape there and there. And then what I can do is just fold against that seam and create a nice clean hem. Fold that side in. See how the tail is shaping up? Now we can felt it down to this bum area. This is his tail sticking up in the air. And this is going to be all covered with that nice raw fiber. I don't want you to be afraid of buying a fleece. 
It's a little bit of elbow work, but it's really quite easy. I just took the fleece and took off the pieces I didn't want. The part with the dung still attached and parts with, with the vegetation. And I washed it with Dawn dishwashing liquid and then rinsed it. In fact, this one got rinsed really well because it was a rainy week and it stayed out for a week because it just kept raining and raining. Okay, so now we have our owl's body. Next thing we have to decide is how you want to put his head on. This one is facing right, so this is the front of his body and I put her head on sideways. This one is facing front. You can put it on any way, actually. You can put it on backwards if you want, because that's what owls do. So to make the head, I'm just going to take it on my finger. See how I'm just rolling it around? Kind of like I'm putting a tourniquet on my, on my finger, really nice and tight. But loose enough that you can work your finger out. Now this part, you can decide how you want it facing. I'm going to face this one facing left. So I just put that roll right up there and I go from the head down to the body all the way around the edge. And then I'm going to go from the body up to the head all the way around the edge until it gets really nice and attached. And when I'm finished with that, I'll be back. Here we are. I shaped his head, kept it nice and round. It's distinct from the body. He's facing that way. So he's looking over his left shoulder. And this is him all cored out. And all we have to do now is feather him and add the eyes. So I'm going to put him off to the side right now. This is the fiber that you'll be getting. And to separate it, you just take a piece at the, the light ends and you just pull it out. I'm going to create several little sections to get started. Okay, I'm going to put the rest off to the side. My first section is going to be between the legs, the polar thing. I'm going to spread out a lock. The, the light tips right at the end of his tail. It's going to go underneath his bum and between his legs. I know it feels a little mean. But my theory is that they can't really feel it until you give them eyes, so they don't become real until then. Okay, so that's the first section. The rest of these sections are going to be put down in a brick-like manner with the tips facing down. I'm going to put this one here, then I'm going to brick it and go up. So, get that a little bit thicker. another section I'm going to cover his go down to there cover his legs the section is going to cover this side of the legs Okay, so that's how it looks so far. So every time we put a layer, we come up a little bit and it shows a little bit of more this this tan. So now I'm going to put a section right in the middle, right like that. And then I have that one here, so I'm going to go up a little bit, like I'm laying bricks, stagger them.
and I'm going to continue to do the front side, the side, and the back. Have fun. I'll be back. Okay, I have him pretty well feathered, most of his body. You can see each of the tan places is another layer of feathers. Um, now, I was looking through the wool, and I found this nice dark brown wool that's a little bit longer. It's one of the cool things about working with a whole fleece is that every part of its body is going to have a different color of wool. This and this were both from the same sheep. So this is going to be his wings. I have two groupings of it with the tan pieces down at the end. This is one side of the wing. I'm going to put it facing up like he's waving. And I'm going to attach it right underneath his head. And then this is his wing. I'm going to bring it down and back to where his tail is. I'm just going to tuck those pieces in. Kind of the nice thing about working with natural fleece as you can find all these different colors. I wish I knew what kind of sheep this was because it's very soft. I almost used it for spinning because it's just so lovely but then it looked like an owl to me. It looked like it was crying out to be made into owls. Okay so that's his wing on one side, his wing on the other side and have it facing up. Attach it right underneath his head. Bring it back and along his tail. So remember how we decided to make him facing the side. He could be facing the front, but we we're having him look over his left shoulder. So, let's see if he'll stand up on his own. There he goes. So I'm gonna find a couple more locks and I'm gonna pull them off. <laughs> this one has a lot of vegetation in it. You could tell these sheeps were well loved because they were kept in, um, in wood chips, so they weren't outside in the muck. Okay, a couple more. All right, now these are going to be made into the ears. Blonde tips, this is the front of his head. I'm going to go across this way and across this way. I'm going to need a little bit more to cover. I don't want to be seeing any. Oh, that's too dark. don't want to be seeing any core showing. So another little piece that way. Attach it first right in front of the wings. So he's going to have an eye there and an eye there. I'm going to do the back of his head the same way. Cross it and cross it. And have the back ears join with the front ears. Now I'm just shaping it up. You can tell if I hold this one up. These are the ears that I'm talking about. These are the ears, tufts that I'm making right there. And I'm going to cover the top of the head by going in the middle out to the ear and from the middle out to the ear. a little bit sparse right there so I can put just a little bit here going up oh we are so close to being done I'm 
Okay, all we need now is his face. We're going to do a beak and his two eyes. Put him over here. Let's do the beak first. Um, you can use a skewer or a pencil. I had a pencil handy. I'm going to take a little bit of that brown that we put aside. You don't need very much. See how thin that is? I'm going to dip it in my water and that'll make it grab a little bit. And I'm going to make a little ice cream cone shape on the pencil. Take it out, put it first facing up, so facing towards the top of his head. I'm going to felt the base in right here. And then I can bring that pointed part down. And shape that in. Okay, he's got a beak, now we need the eyes. I'm going to go again with that brown. Take two equal portions, and we're going to be making balls about the size of a dime. So when I do it, I fold the ends in and put it under my thumbnail. And then I can put that right there. And we're going to be felting in the edges. We want it to stay a little domed. So I'm going around the edges. If I kept going over the top, it would make it flat. Do the same thing with a little bit of yellow, which I misplaced somewhere. Here it is. A little bit smaller. That's my dog. And put that right over that brown part of the eye. And again, go around the edges. The more times you go around, the cleaner the line is. Okay, I'm going to repeat that with the other side. All right, I put the other eye in and I gave him a black dot. I want him looking in back of him. You can put the dots wherever you want. You can have him looking straight ahead, up in the air, rolling his eyes like a sulky teenager. Okay, so I'm going to put this dot in this side. And then all we have left to do is the eyebrows. He is just about there. So for the eyebrows, what I'm going to do is take two more pieces of this. There's one. There's two. I'm going to fold them in half so the ends are a little bit below where those ends are, where the blonde ends are. So felt, dry felt it with my hands. And then I'm going to put them on his eyebrows. Now if you go straight up and down, it makes him look a little bit angry. But if you curve it a little bit, he looks a little bit more inquisitive. So I'll see if I can do this upside down so you can see. I'm going to attach it down by the beak. Then I'm going to go up along the eye, down the eye, and let the end come up and join with the ears. See how that just adds so much cuteness to it. Okay, same with this side. I'm going to bend it in half. I felt it a little bit. Attach it down by the beak, up over the eye, and up in the ears. I'm going to do a little bit more shaping through the top just to make sure these fibers are all really attached. But I think she's adorable. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you need a supply kit, call me. Or send me an email, feltpals at gmail.com, and I can get run, sent right off to you. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.